Okay. Well, welcome to Tuesday, and that means the pub is open. Now, um, before you even get to say anything, Senor Blanco, I have read all of the YouTube comments. I commented on a lot. I answered as many people as I could in one evening while watching football. And most of you guys said you didn't want any guests. And look what I've done. <laughs> it's a guess. But you said it was okay if it was my parents or you. Me. You made the cut because your bobblehead is represented. Right. Yeah. The bobblehead is that in every show. Yeah. He's, you're always there. I am. You're always there. Yeah, and you haven't done anything bad, so you haven't been turned around. <clears throat> right? No, I haven't done anything bad. I've obeyed every rule there is. That I know of. That you that you made. And I... I no, I didn't. And I gave you my Walter candle, which is probably my favorite one. Mucho, mucho amor. Mucho, mucho amor. So, uh, I did hear you, no guests, and I won't have... Because here's what I don't like. I don't like the guests. I don't like comedians interviewing comedians about comedy. You made that clear. And you know what? I'm not going to mention it. Okay. I'm not even going to mention it. I mean, do you, do you feel that way? Don't you feel like there's nothing left to say? Uh, about stand-up? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, you know, I, it's just we're part of such a small subculture, you know, that uh, I, yeah, I think it can get a little tired for some people. I don't know what it's like to listen to comics talk about comedy, but if they're not being funny, comics are pretty useless. You know? All right. Well, that, that's my feeling. Yeah, right. So that Because that a lot of them, it, well, the younger comics, and, and I get it, they'll have me on and then ask me about stuff, and I feel like we've already covered that. Right. 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 So here's the four ladies. We brought the four ladies down to the kitchen, so we have room for this guest, Mr. White. Out of the four mm. ladies, which one's your favorite? Uh, well, you... If, <laughs> exactly, right? Exactly. Uh, they're all short. Well, not really Tanya. That's Tanya Tucker, Cher's, right? And uh, Cher's, Cher's like six foot, right? Or six ten. Got a lot of uh, legs. And Stevie's the most talented, as far as I'm concerned. <gasps> Over Dolly? Yeah. Oh wow! I don't know about that. We're the... and I'm the Stevie diehard, but <laughs> Jesus, I well, thought I thought I was lobbing you a softball there with the Stevie, well, the most talented of the bunch. Yeah, I don't know. Dolly can play like fifty instruments on top of songwriting, on top of shit. What can Stevie do? She's a witch. Well, she's a yeah, witchcraft. Okay, well, she doesn't <laughs> Boom, like she it. wins. Apparently, she doesn't like it when you say that. Um, what can sing? She writes. She's an amazing song. They both are. They, yeah, okay. Well, I just never was that into country music, and I was into Fleetwood Mac, so I know way more of her music than I do. Uh, what are your feelings on Tanya Tucker? I don't have any. None? She's right behind you. I know. I, I hate to say it right in front of her, or right behind her, or whatever she is, but I couldn't uh, I couldn't pick one of her songs out of a tuna net if it was the only thing in the tuna net that wasn't a tuna. Delta Dawn? Okay, now that you've told me, I know that song. <laughs> yes. I could probably sing it. What's, what's your mom? And then what's this? You know this one. What's your mama's name, child? What's your mama's name? No. No. Nope. Nothing. Zero. <laughs> How about Cher? What are your feelings on Cher? Uh, you know, she seems like she's been in my life for five decades. You know, she has. from the Sonny and Cher show, which I thought was great when I was a kid and uh, early access. Um, I heard her live shows, nothing but a bunch of costume changes with a bunch of long stories and a couple of songs, but I could be wrong about that. You're but wrong. anyway, I don't have a, I, I don't have any kinship with any of these people except for Stevie Nicks, who was a rocker. I don't know. I guess Cher was a pop person and country right. and country. So, All right. Okay. That was all that. We start, I like to start, um, since you've never been here, and I'm sure you've never listened to this, uh, I start out with a Dolly quote. Every Stevie episode? Stevie doesn't have a book of quotes, so I can't do Stevie. Okay. Yeah, every episode. This one's about, uh, this, is, uh, this is on life. There's different chapters. Okay. Find out who you are and do it on purpose. Do you feel like you've done that? I think so. I think that I'm true to my nature. 
you know, and I think that's kind of what she was saying, be true to your nature, figure out what that is and, and, and be true to it. Right. I, I don't feel like I pretend to be somebody I'm not, unless I see some advantage to it. <laughs> and then, boom! Well, then the second thing we like to start out with is what are we drinking? And I'm going to let you have a free plug. Not all my guests, the only other guests that are going to be on here are my parents and they don't have any products. They're not selling anything. They're not selling anything. I, you know, Maybe I, shit out of their house. I don't care. I don't care about honking my stuff. I do have a tequila and I have a, a quarantine concert series which sets up live music uh, uh, on uh, Facebook for... Uh, to, just to set up tip jars for these musicians that can make no money at all. And uh, uh, so that does really, really well. And it's at Facebook. Uh, uh, Your Facebook. My Facebook page. You know, you can find it on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, 10 o'clock Eastern. That's always fun. And the tequila is number one tequila, which I believe is the finest drink of liquor anywhere on the planet. And uh, you can get that at uh, taterstequila.com or wherever city you're at. I mean, some some place, some cities don't sell it. Do you place, feel so. that this is good in your uh, Bloody Mary? I would put nothing else in my Bloody Mary. Maria. Bloody Maria, Maria Bloody, yeah, right. Tequila. Bloody right. Maria. Uh, yeah, you know, if, if I'm in a bar and I, I, they don't have my tequila, I just pout and, you know, have a glass of milk. Mm. Well, that, we're the only two people that like milk. This is another whole milk person right here. The... Um, which is one of the reasons I think we remain friends. And then the other reason, I really thought we had a chance without the milk, but you no, know, if it's I the milk that I binds don't us. See it. I don't see know. it. <laughs> Cuz everybody's afraid to order whole milk. Now, I, you said you opened a mini bar and there were you said there were baby bottles of whole milk. Did you mean four babies or just mini bottles? No, there were actually four babies in the yeah, no little bottles of milk. Yeah, there were no babies in there. Not the nobody milk. keeps a baby in the refrigerator. <laughs> you said in a mini bar. I, I'm saying were they baby bottles? Uh, yeah, it, no. It uh, at this great resort in California. It made me think about you. They had these little glass bottles of uh, of milk, whole milk, and I just thought. Kathleen yeah, no, I was saying, were they actual baby, mini baby bottles? Little, yeah, little short bottles. No, of, like a baby bottle that you feed a baby with. You no, know it I mean? had none of that in it. It was right. just little glass jugs in a milk jug shape, just small. Okay. Single serving. Well, see, I would, and, the, and the other thing that I think you're the only person in the world that agrees with me, and I didn't even know this till now, and I've known you for 30 years. I refuse to watch the whole movie of The Wizard of Oz because I think it's terrifying. Uh, yeah, that was a real block with my childhood, you know, because it would come on TV once a year and it was a big deal and everybody was excited about it. And I tried to act like I was excited about it, but literally it just terrified me. And I you know, as a result, I pay no attention to the dogs. That's mustard. Oil. But yeah, the, the, you know, the horror movies in general, uh, I don't like because I don't like the, the, the Wizard of Oz just as a child made me so nervous. I mean, I just did, I felt uncomfortable in my own skin and I knew something bad was going to happen, which it pretty much did. And, uh, and so it was, it also had nightmares about those monkeys. And, and it, I, I get locked onto a nightmare. I don't let it go for years and years and years. And I just hated them. I never even got to the monkeys. You never made it to the monkeys? No, I don't like the concept of being lost. Period. End of story. You, you lost me when you got lost. Right. Because that, it, I, I feel that it bring, breeds anxiety. Um, I don't like the concept of being lost. And then I know that the end, it was all a dream. And then I'm even more mad. Now I'm pissed. You went through all that. And it, it, what didn't, it even happen. didn't even happen. Right. Right. I, if it's going to happen, let it happen. <clears throat> or tell me in advance it didn't really happen, then I won't be so afraid of the monkeys that I know didn't really exist. You could just, but I believe that that flying monkey was a real deal. When I was seven, you know, I'm like, what? Flying monkeys that attack from behind? What? I had no idea. I thought it was, you know, mosquitoes and birds. And I Snakes. had no idea. Yeah. I... I I just don't, I don't understand why people thought it was fine to scare their shit out of children. That, that's it's that, not okay. That's it's, what these movies are. You know, the Walt Disney movies, the mom always dies because he accidentally killed his own mom. Did you know that? Who did? Walt Disney. Killed his own mother? By accident, yeah. He How bought, did it happen? Bought her a house in Burbank, a brand new house, and there was a gas leak, and she said something about it, and he said, you're fine, and they, they were dead. 
I had no idea that happened. That's why all the moms die, they think. Did Disney... I could be spreading rumors, but... Did Disney make The Wizard of Oz? No, I don't know about that. Well, where'd that come from? Yeah. Because the Disney movies I don't like either. They scare me. They're, the the Bambi, the, I, I don't even like the Grinch. I, I know that my son's first nightmare was about Dumbo. <laughs> and it was. And he was, he was two and a half years old. And he just is in his bed and he starts screaming. And he's always been such an even keel, easy kid. And he goes, the eight ball was bad, the thing above, and the bomb. And I'm like, oh, he's having a nightmare. He's having a nightmare. And, he, and, and it was about Dumbo. Uh, and I never really thought Dumbo was. I didn't see uh, it. Yeah, I, I did that night. And it didn't bother me a bit. <laughs> of course, I was, I was 38. <laughs> 38. He's two and a half, apparently. You know, he's got no fiber at this point in his life. I, what happens to Dumbo? I don't even know. I know it's a flying elephant, mm -hmm. right? He flies? Uh, he, he gets shot down by militants. Seriously? No. Oh. <laughs> no, it didn't happen, but apparently in my son's dream. Uh, well, it was just... Terrible stuff. I, you know, I don't really remember it. Like, I don't remember most things. But uh, and all I remember is it just must have just scared the piss out of my son. And I didn't know it did until he had a nightmare about it. I have this recurring nightmare now that I'm on stage. And I look and people are leaving. And they're not leaving because of COVID. They're leaving because I suck. And, and, and I can't wake myself out of these dreams. Even if I realize in my dream, this has got to be that dream I've always had. And, uh, or just since COVID, so eight months. And uh, I can't snap myself out of it. But, you know, eventually I wake up and realize it wasn't true. And that's because you think you haven't worked in a while. And I think if I went on stage right now, it's always that I didn't bother to prepare to go back on stage that I thought, ah, I'll wing it. Which I know in my head wouldn't work at all because I would just be going, uh, okay, what else is there? Right. That's, that's about it. Yeah. Good night. It's Tuesday. That's that was a tight four minutes. But, well. but that scares me, you know, just uh, getting back on stage again, just to, you know, that, because you know how much we work. And the only way to stay good at stand up and make it look like it's effortless is to do it every day. And, that's what we do, and and uh, and then to take eight months off and never, you know, even think about it, you know, hardly. I, I did a set last week, but it was seventeen minutes, not an hour and seventeen minutes, and and I worked at it all day long. Just re I just didn't remember how these things ended. And, and, uh, <laughs> these things are your jokes. Yeah, these it's things. It's not like a book you read. I don't no, I, it's the stuff Tom I wrote. Tom Sawyer, Huck Finn, something like that. Yeah, and uh, Rogan asked me to do a particular bit, and I'm telling you, I, I knew when I told him the story. He's the one that told me it was funny enough to do on stage. I started doing it on stage. It killed. Nothing. I mean nothing. Just a little old echo chamber. Get my, I'm just getting a dial tone. You know, I think it's just from not doing anything with my brain for eight months. Well, and when you did your 17 minutes, how did it go? I was... I was mad at myself over how nervous I was, and I didn't realize we weren't going to talk about stand-up. But well, you started it. Well, it, it related somehow. To right. My, oh, it yeah. Went from that's nightmares why. I, into, that's why I allowed it. Okay. All right. Because it fit the context. Yeah. No. It, it it went. I was mad that, just that it made me nervous. You know, because stand-up doesn't make me nervous. It's just something I know what's going to happen. I know what they want. I know I'm prepared to do it. And uh, so it's going to be fun. So I'm always excited to go on stage and uh, because of how much fun it'll be. And, and it went it went absolutely fine. You know, every joke worked. I was following a kid that wasn't funny. That helps. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, because when the, the lineup was me and Rogan and, and Tony uh, Hanscliffe, and I was like, and it was all, nobody knew that Joe and I were going to be there. And I'm like, I'm not following Joe. You know, he's just too loud and too funny and too much energy. And uh, and I used to have to follow him all the time at the comedy store. He but you her. have better hair. He's got no hair. Exactly. So, so yeah. it's better just happens. I, I, I don't think you get any points for having nice hair in comedy. Yeah, you do. Look at Bill Burr. I'd focus on it. You would? Yeah. Okay. I'd go, wow, look at his hair. He's got really nice hair. Even if you weren't being funny at the moment. Right. I can focus on that. Well, maybe I don't need to practice it. I don't think. Yeah. Well, do you think you would just retire? And then I will not talk about comedy anymore. At this point, um, I've considered it, but 
you know, I don't want to. I had fun on stage once I got over being nervous about it, wondering if it was, you know, I just, it's just so easy for me to go to, I'm not relevant anymore because I don't do it anymore. But I think that but if no, I, nobody's doing it. I know. I so know, but I like... judge myself a little more harshly than I judge others. Um, In a pandemic? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just, I, I'm just not, I'm just unclear about when it'll ever go back. I don't want to go and do half shows, and I don't want to do any of that. And uh, and the pandemic kind of missed me because I'm 63 years old and I have money and I could just retire and you know hop on a bass boat and and go fishing with you. And, yeah, you uh, could. Yeah, you and, could uh, golf. We could golf every day. Yeah, fish every day. I don't see the problem. I don't either. Okay. Well, but I also, I love my fans, and I know that there's still a market for it. I know they still want to see me perform, and if I could do it, you know, why not? I would just have to go into a comedy club for a couple of weeks and just, you know, bang out cheap shows and, uh, until I had my chops back. You know, it's not probably not that big a deal, but I don't well, know. Somebody give me a date, you know? Well, I don't see that happening right now. Yeah. Not for a while. Moving on to our next segment, which I think you're going to like this one. Is, that, this is, is this the one about the biscuit? It is about the biscuit that's in front of you. I like to do, um, it, it, my sh I call it my gas station food or my shitty food, whatever you yeah. want to call it. Things aren't, you shouldn't be eating these things every day. But every once in a while, they're a very nice treat. This is available um, online. It's the Red Lobster Cheddar Bay Biscuit Mix. Do you, what, do you, what are your feelings on Red Lobster? Well, number one, you can't find it in a gas station. So I don't mm -hmm. understand why you're putting it in the show. Well, because some some of them are just shitty food. They may not be at the gas mm -hmm. station. Do you like gas station food? I've eaten it all my life. Um, but I, I, I used to eat real gas station food, not this love stuff, Superstore. You know, it was back whenever they, all they had in the, in the cooler was a blue tuna salad sandwich that had been there for I don't know how long. And I would just throw it back. I mean, I got, you know, I got a, I got a crap every day, so I don't have much money, and I'm at the gas station anyway, going to who knows where to do stand up. Before well, those are still out there. There's one on the way to Atlanta where they start, like guy makes fried bologna sandwiches himself. Yeah. And the bologna's like that thick, which is not my favorite. I like the thin bologna, but they're really good. I like it well done too. I Me like too. My, I like my bologna crispy. Me too. Uh, no, this is not at a gas station. But what are your feelings on Red Lobster? Why are you covering the name Red Lobster? Is there a clue in there to my answer? No. <laughs> Fresh fish, day? live lobster. Well, how do you feel about Red Lobster in general? Well, you know, back in the back a long time ago, I, I thought it's where rich people ate because we didn't get to go there very often because it was very, very pricey. And then I find out that it's just kind of middle of the road seafood. And uh, do you ever crave their biscuits? Uh, no, not 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 to my knowledge. I've I never... think it's the best part of Red Lobster. Is the biscuit? Yeah. I, I so remember I'm... loving the biscuits. Well, I made some, and we've already. Truth be told, we already ate one. I didn't. Well, I did, and it tastes just like it. <laughs> Eat it. You have to put the garlic right on top. Secret recipe: just add shredded cheddar, water, and butter. That's all you got to do to make that. That's why I can make it. What are your feelings on that? Does it taste like Red Lobster? It does kind of remind me of the old uh, Red Lobster uh, biscuit. All right. So if you guys like Red Lobster, even if you don't, I say yes to this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just let you tell them whatever you want to tell them about the Red Lobster biscuit. You can biscuit. tell them if you don't like it. No, it's okay, but I mean, I wouldn't go out of my way if I could go to a Red Lobster and just order them. Uh, from, you know, fresh out of the oven. Well, right, but you can't, we're, we're not going in restaurants right now. Well, we're not. Some people are. No judgment. Why don't we do some research and see if uh, you can just go to a Red Lobster and get these biscuits without going to all this trouble. I think it'd be a good Oh, you idea. mean to go? Yeah, get them to go. They'll but you're suggesting they, they they'll they'll get on cold. a website. Well, they'll be cold by the time you get home. Okay. All right. I think you no, want to, I we think could eat them in the car. I think they're you want good. Want to go and eat them the in the way. car? No. There's I a red do lobster not. two miles that way. Um, right next to your Hooters. I'll go to Hooters. <laughs> I know you will. And I hate those wings. I don't know why you love them. I, I love them because of uh, familiarity. 
And then I also have a card that gives me free wings for as many people as I want. And, and that, that's where my road crew eats because it's free food. John Daly got me that card. And, um, and it says on the back, I forget what it says, but something about this guy's got money, but he's still sticking us with this bill. And, um, huh? and uh, doesn't work for liquor or uh, tip. So You have uh, to do that part. I got to do that part. But still, you know, it's free food for my road crew. Well, all right. That makes sense. Thank you, Red Lobster, and uh, who never did that for me. No, Hooters, thank you for, <laughs> for doing that for me. Yeah, I don't have uh, uh, mm. that. You no. do You do when you're with me, Kathleen. I do, and that's the only thing. Here's your Hooters VIP card right here. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it says. Oh, I don't have my glasses on. Here, you. I do. I gave you free glasses already. Right. They're on the table over there. I didn't lose them. All right. It says... Um, even though make big bucks, I'm sticking Hooters with 100% of the bill, except the tip, tip one transaction per day, so don't try to loop back. Well, if you go to another one, it, <laughs> they don't really track it. <laughs> so you just slide in on another location, and then, and then you can feed them lunch and dinner. Oh, it's even got your name on it in gold. Yeah, in gold. Wow, it ex... Yeah. Oh my god, it oh my god, it expired. It did 1 31 2020. Oh, you wow. better call these people, alcohol not included. Mm. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not too I'm early sure now. we can. Um, here, so we're okay, we're moving on from the biscuit now to uh, these. Do you like Pringles? Ah, before you eat it, do you like Pringles? Yes, okay, great. The, you can eat it. These are Wendy's Baconators, like the burger. I like to find the weird shit in the grocery store and see if it's worth it. Wow. I like it. You don't like it? I'm trying to find the Baconator in it. I got it. Immediate. You got the, you get bacon in that? Mm-hmm. And uh, cheese. You don't? A little hint of a uh, burger. I don't get the burger. Well, the Baconator is a burger. No, I got that. I meant I wasn't sensing it. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not either. All right, so I, you, you vote no on these. I don't vote no on them. I just wouldn't eat them because, uh, you know, they're probably not that good for you. And um, But if it was late at night and it was all I had and, you you know, I was digging through your pantry and I found well, them. I'd I probably had, crack them open and eat a few. Well, what if I had regular Pringles next to that? Which one would you go for? I go for the regular uh, Pringles or the sour cream okay, and well, chive. Well, this is a special thing. Did any of this come from a gas station? These did. Okay. Those, no. Sometimes and, it's just shitty food. It doesn't have to be gas station. Well, didn't you set it up by saying gas station? I said gas station shitty or shitty food. Okay, all right. Because, by the way, I talked about Love's Gas Station, how I really like their breakfast tacos, and I'd like to correct myself because everybody told me. I thought there were Love's Gas Stations everywhere. But then when I hit, I Googled it, and it looked like they were clustered in the South and the Midwest, and then all these uh, truck driver people and YouTube people told me they're everywhere. Loves. Yeah. Hey, well, I thought so too, but I'm like, Google thing. These are Ruffles, all dressed. It's the number one flavor in Canada. What does all dressed mean? Find out on the back. I bet you're wondering what all dressed means. After all, in America, it just means you're wearing all your clothes. <laughs> but in Canada. They have punchlines on the Ruffles yeah, bag? They do. Wow. But in Canada. <laughs> they're trying to be yeah. They were. They were. They tried a little funny. Uh, but in Canada, all dressed actually means delicious, ridgy chips that somehow taste salty, savor, and sweet all at the same time. And then they said, mm -hmm. sounds good. A. Yeah, right. They don't have to do that for the Canadians. That you know, sounds can, confusing. And it's got the, let's see, it's got the maple leaf. Yeah, right. I got right. it. So. They don't sell them in uh, the U.S.? Yeah, I got these at a gas station. Well, they got gas stations in Canada. I know you go up there all the time. I have not been to Canada in, since quarantine, and I probably wouldn't have driven my own car up Those there. Those things have a shelf life like fucking Chernobyl. <laughs> you know, they, you can buy them in one country and bring them to another country for it's a the, year. It's the official chip of Canada. It's the Look at the size of that. <laughs> oh. 
It's, it's, it's for the, it's like the it, Wizard of Oz it, chip. It looks like a flip flop. It's, it's it, making me nervous. <laughs> that's the official chip of Canada. Just cool. so that so Ruffle says, I don't know, Canadian. Okay, sweet, me. savory, salty, all at the all same time. Guys. I don't like it. Well, it tastes like barbecued ruffles, doesn't it? Yeah, but that savory part's coming in wrong. Um, you put it too close to those Pringles. That's the burger. Shut up. <laughs> the burger coming it's, over from the, the Pringles. It's the biscuit. That's that biscuit. <laughs> that tastes like barbecued ruffles, which, yeah. I, which I like. I like barbecued Lay's too, but I like plain Lay's. Lay's is my favorite. Yeah. By far. That, which, by the way, medical tip, my father swears that a bag of Lay's and a real Coke fixes any stomach issue you have. I, so I think I've tried it. Keep that in mind. All right. Now what I like to do is move on to things that I found. And then we'll talk about you a little bit. Okay. Because the one story I want you to tell the most, and you, I, you said you haven't ever told it out loud about the Navy. Uh, Just to friends. What story about yeah. the Navy? Being gracefully escorted out of the Navy. Is um, that a good way to put it? How would you put it? I don't really think that there was much grace to it. I was trying to be polite. I think it was unapologetic. Uh, just got kicked out of the Navy. Well, from... well, can you tell the story? Paddles has never heard it. Well... I mean, I'm no angel, right? Is that how we're going to start this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm no angel. Well, we were just listening to some Allman Brothers earlier, so. Um, you know, I, uh, I joined the Navy when I was 18 years old, the day I turned 18. And um, Why? Um, well, I got kicked out of high school for the same <laughs> reasons I got kicked out of the Navy, and and fired from jobs and, you know, I had a hard time finding my way, you know, I, I, my, my background was kind of, kind of strange because I've come from an ultra small town, 700 people or so. And, and then Does into the Fritch, Texas, Fritch, Texas. And then we moved to the Houston area, which is one of the bigger cities in the country and, and, uh, mayhem and weirdness. And even though we didn't live right in Houston, we compared to Fritch, we lived in a, you know, a huge town. It was out by all the refineries and stuff, and it, it, it so I just didn't. I, my, my brain again is just faulty. It's a faulty mechanism, and uh, and it, and school work was not my forte. Uh, I, I just couldn't seem to do it. Although I was really good at math, I was dyslexic. I had an attention deficit disorder that was diagnosed as you know me being stupid. And uh, so, you know, I was in slow classes that gave me pretty low self-esteem, and I was kind of accepted by the, you know, the whatever drug community was there in the high school in 74. Um, so I just didn't see any options, and the Navy, you know, the when I interviewed with uh, all of them, the Navy guy gave me some tickets to an Astros game, and I'm like, well, maybe I'll join the Navy now. So, the Astros weren't even good then, were they? Uh, they were. They might not even have been the Astros. Hey, it was so long ago. The dog mustard. Come here. He's moving Tanya. Oh no. Yeah, he just got rid of her he, in this elimination game. So, and I joined the Navy. I and uh, <clears throat> I got. Uh, I tested high. Uh, so I got to be a navigator, so a quartermaster in the Navy. So. And that was the highest thing you could get is a you know somebody with a Out GED, of the gate. right? You could if you had test the highest thing is then you get to work up in the bridge with the <clears throat> officers under a navigation officer, but you got to learn how to do fixes and work a, a what was called a Loran back then and uh, long range aid to navigation and sextons and all that stuff and uh, which I found interesting. Uh, and I got stationed in Hawaii. Uh, where they had this new kind of weed that I'd never even considered. And uh, it was so strong, they called it elephant weed, and it was just these tops that they were growing in Maui. And uh, we used to go over to this guy's trailer, and, and uh, he had like a skull with a German helmet on it, and he was like the coolest guy ever, and we'd buy weed from him. 
And I remember, and then we would buy a gallon of, uh, or a half gallon or whatever, of Spinata wine, which is a really sweet Spanish wine. Never heard of it. Really? No. And we'd sit on the dock and drink wine out of this jug and smoke this great weed. And one time we, we were going back to the ship and uh, there was a Kentucky Fried Chicken and we pulled up and they were closing. But they said, you can just have all this stuff that we had. So they dumped about 15 pieces of chicken on us. I had my own bottle of wine by then, so <laughs> to go to pair with to pair with the Kentucky. Yeah, wine. yeah. So did you ask the lady what wine pairs well with extra crispy? Well, good, because <laughs> that's what I've got. So, Kool-Aid. so we get really, really drunk, and our our ship was in berth A one at Pearl Harbor, so that's because it was a salvage ship, so it needs to get out quick. So we, we, it was the first one, but that was also the roughest one, you know, that you would actually get some movement in the thing and. And I drank a whole bottle of wine, smoked weed, ate about 10 pieces of chicken. And then the next morning, somebody woke me up and went, you got to clean this up. And, and I went back in the bathroom and there was a, just this big pile of pink chicken vomit. And, uh, it, it, and it was an easily followable trail right back to my bunk where it was on my shirt. And... You didn't do like an Indian and walk backwards in your own trail? No, I did, I did not. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Um, so then we went to, uh, we went on our West Pac, Western Pacific, whatever. So to the Philippines and to Vietnam and, um, uh, and it was, you know, this whole, shoot. well, wait, were you, it, it, before you went over there, were you in trouble for the vomit incident? No, I had to clean it up. That's all. I had to clean it up. And, uh, there was really no hell to pay. I didn't get busted with weed or anything. And I guess got, when we were, we kind of ran out of weed and everything on the way. It took us 31 days to get from, from Hawaii to Korea. This, this, this ship was the USS Conserver, and it was a piece of shit. Commissioned in 36. They had to spend $100,000 on it to sink it because oh, they couldn't oh get it far God. enough off the coast. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was a piece of junk. It sunk now. And, uh, it, but it was really slow. <clears throat> and uh, so when we got over there, there was nothing but... You know, well, especially to, to Hong Kong, there were some guys that got heroin, and we were doing these little bitty bumps of heroin. And there were only, what, I don't remember, it was 80, that was 87 people on our ship. And uh, they did a random drug test, and one of the eight officers came up positive. I came up positive, and a few, so they ended up putting me in a padded cell in Iwakuni, Japan. And then they flew me. Uh, At this point, do you think you're in trouble? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. You think you're going to get kicked out at this point? Well, no, they were sending me to the Naval Drug Rehabilitation Center in Merrimack, California. So they they put me in a medevac flight, strapped to a bed, fly to Guam, take us off the plane, put me in another padded cell. Are you the only one? Uh, no, there were two, three other people, but there were other people on the plane that weren't strapped to a bed. I mean, I couldn't get up. And I'm like, I'm not suicidal. I mean, I, you know, I'm not going to kill myself over this. It, it was, you know, not that big a deal. And then I get to Miramar. And, that's why uh, they strapped you down? They thought you were suicidal? That's why they put me in the padded cell and strapped me down to where I couldn't even pick my nose or, you know, whatever. And you know how much I like to pick my nose, Kathleen. Yeah, yeah. So then, the, the reason I just really don't know what this story is about, but um, so I get to um, there, and there's more drugs there at the Naval Drug Rehabilitation Center. That had a steady supply of hard drug acid and things like that, and things that I liked when I was really, you know, when I was young. And, uh, and some people like it, some people don't. Some people never have access to it. I just happen to have access to it and a taste for it. And um, so then I got I got busted with acid, or I came up positive on the test for something. I don't remember what it was. And then, so they were like, that's it for you. You're This is the end of the road here. And uh, and I was being discharged, and our, our company commander uh, called me a hole in our national line of defense. I'm like... I just turned 19, dude. What were you wanting? What do you think you were going to get out of me? <laughs> well, and if one guy is the whole, right, yeah, we the, have a much larger problem. Yeah, but there's a way bigger problem if you were counting on me. In the, in You're this. counting on a guy 
who signed up because he got free Astro tickets. Right. That's probably not the best way to decide who's our to, who's our best defenseman. <laughs> right. No, but that's what he said, and I'm like, wow, that's a lot to hear. And then I uh, then I, I got kicked out of the Navy. Was there another story you wanted to hear? No, this was that, really kind of sad. No, well, I did. I think it's funny that a uh, full-grown adult looks at a nineteen-year-old and says, "You're a hole in our." Nation. Oh, okay. So we, I, I got to where you wanted me to get to, but that's what he said. And then I got kicked out of there, and um, and then I went home back to Houston and got in more trouble and and yeah, got arrested and I got probated to a drug abuse program that I went to work for. And I was sober for three and a half years and uh, should have been, I mean, needed to be. And, uh, you know, th then I started telling my life, I went to work for them as their primary public speaker. So I'd go around to these high schools full of kids and tell them my life story of addiction and trouble and all this stuff that could go wrong. And I was real good at it. And I got better at it. And I was doing like three sets a day. They were just bringing kids into these auditoriums. And I could make them laugh. I could make them laugh. But I still had, I didn't make a connection that that would be worth any money one day. And right. so um, then I started smoking pot again, so which doesn't, you know, didn't work out with the drug abuse program. And, <laughs> and uh, when I was 29, I'd already had all these sets under my belt, you know, uh, the, uh, just monology, just going on stage talking, all of it, just freestyle stuff, you know, although some of it became a routine. And uh, and then stand-up came easy because I'd already done all that. I didn't realize it added up to anything. or And, and at the time, I didn't realize why stand-up didn't make me throw up like it did some people. And... Uh, and here we here we sit. All right. I wanted the Navy story. Not many people have been kicked out of the military. Oh, I think you are wrong. Well, nobody I know. Okay. Except you. All right. All right. You're the only one. I, you know what? It, it's it's things that happened to me in my youth, and I don't apologize for any of them. And you know, we all make decisions, and we, we you know, well, we, we I was pay looking them. for an apology to me as an American who was alive for, at the time for being a hole in the national <laughs> land defense. Well, you're not going to get it, Kathleen. You know what? I'm 10 years younger, so I was... Pull the cords, paddle! I was We're sitting, shutting it down! I was at home feeling safe in my bed, laying on shag carpet in the Midwest in the 70s, thinking you were out there protecting me. Yeah, well, you were 11 yeah. years old. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> People probably don't know that you had a table factory in Mexico for a while either, but... I didn't have a table factory. Well, what was the mosaic? We did a... Mosaic tile application to existing pottery. So, oh, but that, okay, that got technical. It ended up being a table. It's bedazzled. It never was a table. It you was a, showed it was me a, a pot. table. We may have done a table. We did a bird bath. That was a funny thing, <laughs> because uh, my the guy, you know, they don't have bird baths in in Mexico. They have them in the U.S. And so we had bought them in the U.S. and took it to Mexico. And did this mosaic tile application to it. And um, why don't they have bird baths in Mexico? I'll tell you why. Because I asked uh, Irma Munoz, the lady who ran it, uh, her husband Juan Munoz. I asked him the exact same thing, and he said, uh, "Mr. White, in uh, Mexico, the birds uh, man, they're pretty much on their own." <laughs> <laughs> I There's not a what about the birds organization? <laughs> How are they going to get a bath? Well, really I agree with him. Yeah, right, 100%. I say that as I took a ladder out to fill the bird feeder that you saw the car <laughs> right, was sitting yeah, on. Multiple bird feeders in the backyard. Yeah, uh, with the squirrel. They're not on their own here. So you, okay, but you don't call that, you wouldn't have called it a tiny factory? I would say, I'd call it an art, art studio more than anything else. I was dating a girl then that, that instead of getting a job, she'd do that, and then she would take it to a to these, you know, talent fairs and sell them and she'd sell them in three hours. But it would take her six months to make five more pieces and uh, they had just cut my pay at the Funny Bone Chain. I, I was ready to quit and I was kind of frustrated and I said, well, why wouldn't you just go to Mexico? And even though you don't speak Spanish and don't know anybody, <laughs> why wouldn't you just go down there and hire a bunch of people? <laughs> To make this stuff, I will hire them without. Direction. You'll do it through charades, the hiring process. Yeah, you can't much. speak Spanish. No, right. or not you're a, gonna hope not you speak word. English. I mean, I could, I could ask. Not you. I meant her. I could ask a lot of questions in Spanish, but if the answer wasn't a number or a color, <laughs> I was, 
I was lost, you know, especially if it was a theory, you know. I'm like, okay, okay, stop, stop, stop. But if it was... What's the word for stop? Yeah, alto. Alt. <laughs> alto. Um, it's funny because when we were, Marshall was like four or five when we were there, and, and uh, I was there three years. And uh, there was these two kids that belonged to some of the work ladies, and uh, they were fighting. I mean, they were brothers, and they were just having a fight. And Marshall went out on the front porch and went... Alto! And uh, I don't even know how many words he knew, but he knew how to say stop, but they didn't stop. Well, there's just not but, many comedians that have just left the United States and gone to Mexico to I'm do impetuous. mosaic. Yeah. Uh, what word did you use? Impetuous? I don't even know what that means. It means I spur the momentish. Oh, I thought, I only know impulsive, Ish. impetuous. Yeah. Never heard of it. It could be wrong. I took No, I took your word for it. I'll believe it. I'm going to go repeat it. Oh, somebody's going to check as it. As soon as we go golf and, uh, today, I'm going right. to, all right. All right. So, yeah, so we, we did that, and um, I went down there, and uh, it's, in fact, when we went down to Mexico, we had uh, my van pulling the biggest trailer rider makes. The biggest truck rider makes pulling the biggest trailer rider makes all of it in a little caravan down I 35 hop over into Mexico three years later I leave with the exact same equipment going the other way going well that was a bad idea what and was the town Reynosa Mexico the same town that Abraham answers from uh, the golf yeah. a lot of people don't know that yeah and my son made a hole in one at the same course he grew up playing at the uh, compensatory golf course and uh, with a US kids club driver on a 95 yard downhill from regular women's tees uh, hole in one his 11th day ever playing golf and almost did it the day before he made his first birdie before he made his first par he just and to this day he's got great hands because he never plays golf but whenever he d does he can hit it way past me and in Mexico it, do you, do, is it the same tradition did he have to buy everybody in the clubhouse a drink he didn't they're on their own too yeah like, like birds. the birds <laughs> <laughs> no but they did have this really fun tournament and uh that was uh, you could have as many mulligans as you wanted but you had to do a two ounce shot of tequila with it and uh oh, like so that would be fun yeah it was yeah, and uh fun. so you yeah take all you want <laughs> you'll yeah. make more and uh and then they had this uh on the 12th hole which in the tournament never got past the 12th hole by the 12th hole, everybody was so Too drunk. The 13th been. hole didn't even matter. And, and they had this big pot of like goat's head soup or something. It was really good. I remember that place. I loved it. it was, and I loved Mexico. I loved my experience there because I was, I was building tables. I mean, I literally, all the tables that we worked at, I built all of them, all the shelves with all the stuff on it. That's what Our, you said in the beginning. You said you never built we, a table. No, I built tables. But we didn't sell tables. That wasn't our product. Our product... It turns out was heavy and fragile, which is a horrible combination. It's it's uh, easy to break, but it's heavy. What's the problem? So for us to be really successful, we would have had to invest in this piece of equipment that would have shot foam around it, and uh, I just didn't have the money to do that. But the company, as far as I know, is still alive because when I moved out of the country to do blue collar uh, comedy tour with uh, Jeff and the boys. Uh, I gave it to him. I said, okay, which was really no more than uh, the building, and uh, which we rented for $100 a month and a bunch of pair of uh, tile clippers, you know, and, but, and, and the inventory. I'm like, you, you guys you can have it, it all, right? Well, that's and, a nice parting gift. Somebody was probably happy. And you know what? The biggest problem with it was me. You know, I, I didn't know what I was doing. They knew exactly what they were doing. They were doing handicraft stuff, and that's, they're good at that anyway. They made their own clothes, cooked their own food, and they were good at it. They they really evolved it uh, themselves uh, to to a finer piece of uh, of art. And as far as I know, every single piece of it that we ever brought to America sold that we got here that wasn't. Broken. Well, when you're saying a piece, and if it wasn't a table, what was the piece? Just a mosaic. I've already told you this. I didn't hear. It's it. a, a planter. You know, like a like a pot. Uh, you put a plant in? Yes. That, covered in tile. Okay. Yep. Well, you showed me a table. I know, you, I saw it. And then I said, are you going to go to street fairs? It was probably a bird bath. Like a <laughs> person that's going to be at a Memorial Day street fair, and you said, why not? I, you know what? We got to where, I got to where I didn't, number one, I didn't have any money. And uh, so we would 
put it on anything you know, that I could find to put it on. If I didn't have enough money to go buy some more pots for to put it on, like the tile, pieces of piece start... of wood, and, and start cementing these tiles or whatever I bring in. So there could have been a table. Well, thank but you. it wasn't our idea. It wasn't our concept. It wasn't more than maybe one. Oh, two. I don't know. All right. I don't know. All right. Good story. I like it. Um, all right. So what I like to do for the the termites, and he is the grand termite. I didn't even. Yeah, I, you, you didn't I, really give me the props for that. I didn't give you any introduction, really. Right. None. Ron White. There you uh, go. That's grand termite, <laughs> right. and it rhymes. Yeah, Ron and, White, yeah, grand termite. Grand termite, Ron White. Ter Ron White, grand termite. I like that better. I like to find the stories uh, that interested me in the week. I try yeah. not to be political, but sometimes a little COVID update. Okay. Uh, the one political story I did talk about was Rudy Giuliani picking the wrong four seasons <laughs> to have his press conference in front of. <laughs> and Just when you think it can't get any funnier. Between the vibrator store and right. the crematorium. Yeah, right. Um, but that was last week. So uh, here's a little breaking news. But you read more of the news than I actually thought you did. Um, first, How much did you think I read? <laughs> well, I don't picture you using your uh, iPad as much as you do. Well, it just depends. I mean, I read the news every day. That's what I do in the morning. So I... I I subscribe to to just about some version of every media. So I read, you know, CNN, Fox, um, Wall Street Journal, and you know, uh, every single day, and uh, just to stay abreast of what's going on in the world. Now and yeah, now. I I um not that I don't think you watch the news, but I didn't think you read read it, read it that much. Uh, are you aware that the first cruise ship? We may have talked about this set. To sail in the Caribbean, um, they tested fifty-three people. They put fifty-three people on it. They all tested co negative that at some point, and then they had to turn the ship around because wonk wonk. Yes, COVID got them. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I only know that because you told me that yesterday. Uh, so apparently, I don't have all the news feeds you do. Well, they had a case, but I read it was five cases, and it was five days into the voyage. They had a turnaround. It was the Sea Sea Dream Yacht Club Sea Dr Club Sea Dream. That's the ship. Tested positive. It was anchored off the coast of St. Vincent's in the Grenadines. And there's a travel writer who was on board. He's the guy who wrote about all this shit. And they turned. That's the first one. Um, would you do it? Would you get on a cruise ship right now? Uh. <laughs> No, but my mother would. My mother said, we found the best deals on Alaskan cruises. I'm like, yeah, I bet you did, mother. And uh, Would you uh, take her? No, no, I wouldn't let mother. I, you know, my, Well, mother does pretty much whatever she wants to, but you know, she's 85 and the virus is just looking for her. Uh, but she did fly out to L.A. a few weeks ago to see me, and she made it just fine. She's, uh, her health is really, really good. She's way stronger than she was this time last year, which was almost dead. And uh, so mom's kicking it. Well, um, anything above almost dead is better than almost dead. Yeah. Uh, would you go on a cruise ship when there is not COVID? No. Why? Have you been? I, I, I've been on, uh, yeah, I've been on a few. Uh, you know, I've, I've been on low-end cruises and high-end cruises. And uh, uh, one cruise I rented the same suite Oprah Winfrey stays in whenever she rents the rest of the boat for herself. And it was... You had a library, and it was a staff, and it was and it was nice. But I fought with the woman I was with, which was Barbara. The the suite next to us, there was this tall, chunky little Russian dude, ball headed, that had the hottest girlfriend I'd ever seen. And as soon as I saw her, I'm like, I'm fucked. I'm gonna look at her. She's gonna see me look at her. I'm trying not to look at her. That's where all I did was go like this. And she, oh, oh, now you want to be with her? And now I got to lie. No, I want to be with you. <laughs> I had no, please no, none for me, thanks. And uh, and we fought so much that uh, just over that, over that girl, she was just so ridiculously jealous. And I'm like, that's a rich Russian dude. She's not gonna climb over our balcony, balcony, and attack me. And um, but you might her. <laughs> yeah, 
I thought about it every single night um, for a year. Did years. you enjoy the, 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 the act of cruising? Like a lot of people really like it. No, I, I like it. I mean, I liked it on that on that ship, and uh, you know, because it's you, you get to hit a lot of places without really going through uh, you know customs or anything, and um, and, and we went to some pretty interesting locations, and uh, but it was also ridiculously uh, expensive, and now I kind of like to go to a city and just stay there, you know, and really see the city a little bit better than hopping from place to place, you know, hit all the golf courses, all the restaurants, oh, and really finally get, a, you know, but just moving around every day, except if you do it on a cruise ship, which is fine, because uh, you don't feel it, you know, it's like traveling in my bus, it's like being FedEx, you just wake up and you're there, and um, I felt like they didn't really, every time we got to somewhere we liked, because Lewis did two of those comedy cruises against my vote, my vote was Nene, I'm with John Panette, Nene, we're not doing that. I said, why don't you just get a resort and do it there? Why do we have to get on a boat? I don't understand why we have to. Mm -hmm. And I felt like every time we got somewhere fun, this is what we heard. Ah, ah, until mm -hmm. finally it got to the point, passengers Madigan and Black, please mm -hmm. report. They were calling our name, and we were at a bar with margaritas, finally got settled. A right. wonderful mm -hmm. margarita, and he can't run that fast. Like, Lou doesn't even mm -hmm. have proper Lewis Black. tennis shoes for running. <laughs> Lou's not, Lou's so unfamiliar yeah. with the gym, he went in somewhere in Los Angeles and asked the front desk girl if they had a levitator. And I said, Lou, that would be like from The Exorcist. I, what the fuck is a levitator? He goes, you know what I mean? The thing where you go like this. <laughs> <laughs> An elliptical? Yes. Is that what he meant that's by a levitator? That's what he meant by a okay. That's So Lou's not at, like usually ready for athletics. Yeah. So when they're going, wah, wah, and they say Madigan Black, I know I can make it. I but. And they're probably going to wait for him, right? Because isn't everybody on the ship there to see that comedy cruise? Or no. is that not the case at all? No, it is not the case at all. It was a Royal Caribbean ship that holds about 4,000 passengers. And 500 within the 4,000 were part of the Lewis Black comedy cruise. So you paid extra and you got this badge. And that allowed you into the showroom every night. And there were like six of us that came. Vic Henley, John right. Burnett, whomever. I, I think Don Marrera went one time. <clears throat> Just fun people. Uh, so you got to go to the show every night. So we'd all do like 15 each night. So then your whole, two, you know, whatever you you're currently had in your head could last the week. Right, okay. And then Lou had to MC them all because it was all his idea. And then he started complaining about that. And I said, well, whose idea was it? Lou. Right. You don't see the wacky McMadigan ship going out, do you? Well, no, I didn't no, do one don't. either. I got. I, they, they tried to get me to do one, and I, yeah, they tried to get me to do one, and uh, I was like, you know, I'd, I'd feel trapped. It, you know, I saw Kid Rock at the uh, golf course yesterday, who could do nothing but talk about how much he loves you because of some uh, USO thing you guys did, and uh, we did. But uh, he tried to get me to go on his, you know, rock thing, which probably would have been a lot of fun. But it was a week, and it's a uh, commitment. Yeah, it, it, there's no way to get away, and and if it rains, here's the saddest part. You know, they have a casino. Most of the cruise ships have a casino. Sure. The casino can't be on if you're docked. So they docked us, and then turned off the fun, and it's raining. So you know what I'm doing now? Reading in a room the side of a closet with a Chilean minor shower. That's what's going on. What? With a what? A <laughs> Chilean? I call it the Chilean uh, coal miner shower. Remember when the Chilean miners got stuck and they sent those ple plexiglass round tubes to go get them? Sort of. And then they got them out of the earth like that? Yep. That's the size of the shower I had in my room. It was exactly, it could fit two Chilean coal miners that had to be short and thin. And hadn't eaten in 28 days. Correct. Right. Yeah, it couldn't stand up. That's why you need two of them. See, that's one of the things I was afraid of, that, that I would get a, a bad interior room when when really what I want is the Mac Daddy room. And I'm, but I'm pretty sure that uh, that Kid Rock has got that one tied up. Well, don't you think there's more? I know for a fact there's two because Lou got one one time. Yeah, but there was also there's a bunch one of at the front big and one at the back. I was the comic, you know. 
Um, yeah, you would have gotten the shaft. Yeah. The, the elevator shaft, the uh, mine shaft. The Chilean miner the shower. Ch- Here's the other thing about the cruise ships. Literally, yeah. obviously, I am happy with cheap food. Like, I don't need fancy food. I will be just as happy with a hot dog. Floppy Joe's. Sloppy and... Joe's, whatever. Yeah. There was something that cruise ship food, everything was that far off to the point where you just didn't want it. Like, yeah, it looks like a hot dog, and it seems like a hot dog, or the mustard. They're not getting the mustard you know. It's like Bob's mustard. Right. And then that fucks up the hot dog. It's not Cheerios, it's OEOs. Right. Something's that far off that the coffee was, ugh. Like, and I'm not a coffee. I drink gas station coffee. 7-Eleven coffee's fine with me. Any gas station coffee. It was worse than the worst gas station, which I actually know where that was. It was in West Virginia. Um, uh, so I saw a sign at a gas station once that said, if our coffee's not fresh, it's free. And I'm like, oh, just, just what I always wanted, a large, <laughs> not fresh, free cup of coffee. You got any open mayonnaise back there that's been sitting around for a few days? I can make a sandwich to go with that not fresh, free cup of coffee. Well, there was, I was stopped at a gas station in West Virginia, and I went in, and, and the guy had pots, like, you know, like a restaurant coffee mm-hmm. pot, that kind. And there were two burners. And one, it's like at a restaurant when somebody would forget when I worked in restaurants. And that bottom starts getting to be like a, the top uh, of creme brulee. Right, a wafer, it's a just, coffee it's wafer. Just, it's just burning sugar <laughs> yeah. and shit. But the other one had coffee in it, maybe a fourth. And then there, were, um, there was a cup, someone's cup from home. But I didn't see any like plastic or paper cups, and I said, uh, do you guys have any cups? And he goes, it's right there. I thought, he wants me to shoot coffee in his coffee cup and then leave. Like, I have to leave it. It's his. He wanted you to drink the coffee out of his mug? Well, it was empty, but he was saying, go ahead. Like, or stay and talk to him? I don't know. Whatever he meant, I left. I don't know. You're pretty interesting. He was trying to lock you in on a conversation. Not unless it was about Mothman in West Virginia. You probably don't know about Mothman, though, do you? I do not. That's what I figured. Um, this is incoming because we've been talking about COVID a lot. Sure. Um, the predecessor of Sweden's state epidemiologist, I can't say epidemiologist, ha- Ang- Anders Tang- Tang- Tangnell, has accused him and his team of failing, ad- uh, failing to adequately prepare Sweden for the second wave because uh, second um, wave of coronavirus because wishful thinking led them to believe that immunity would leave the country protected. So this is the herd immunity people. Remember, everybody kept saying, "Let's do that." This is Sweden, right? Well, Sweden tried it. Wishful thinking. When you don't believe the worst scenario has been guiding Swedish decisions too much, the Swedish authorities have been slow. All the time, instead of being proactive, they run after the virus, and the virus is able to spread too much. The guy said in the summer, everything is going to be fine. He, fi- he predicted that this immunity would make controlling the infection. Why does this sound so familiar? I know. <laughs> so he said that if we did herd immunity, and then oh, it would be much easier for Sweden over the winter than it would be for Denmark, Norway, or Finland, which, unlike Sweden, impose lockdowns. The big reduction we're seeing now suggests that the infection is being held back and it will probably be hit less hard. Not true. But now the country is seeing the number of new cases rise by about 50% a week with a record 5,500 new cases and 42 deaths reported on Friday. I'd hoped he was right. It would have been great, but he wasn't. Some guy named Linde. Now we have a high death rate and we've not escaped a second wave. Maybe it makes a little difference, but not much difference. So there you go. Well, he should come to the U.S. and see what it's like to have a thousand people die every day and uh, and a hundred and something new thousand new cases. You know, if you're not going to lead, get out of the way. Get out of the way, please. Get out of the way. Listen to science. Wear a mask, please, please, please. Don't be stupid. Well, if you say, "Well, I don't know if I'm being stupid. I just don't want to wear a mask," and it's my right. You're being an idiot. Don't be an idiot. Care about others. Wear a mask. And if you're not going to leave, get out of my way. You're you're damaging our country. Thank you. That's it for me. That was a very good PSA. Thank you. If you'd been the president just an hour sooner, but you can't. Can you be the president if you've been kicked out of the Navy? Mm-mm. Is that part of your thing? No, I'm also a convicted felon, so that keeps you out. Oh, no, it was expunged. It so, was expunged. You got a key yep. to a city. Somebody gave you a key to their city. Who? 
I don't remember. <gasps> you only oh. got one key to one city, and you can't. It's in Texas. I know that. Yeah. I remember. No, it. it was made Ron White Day in the state of Texas. I, I know that. That's really right. Oh well, about. That, well then you can definitely vote again if it's your day. If right. you have your own day. I uh, yeah, I got to address the uh, House of Representatives, and uh, my mother was there. What did you and, say? Uh, the first thing I said was, "I can't believe you guys have to work on Ron White Day." <laughs> <laughs> It's <laughs> a good opening line. Yeah, right. Yeah. What'd you close with? Uh, I, I don't remember. The uh, the opening was so good. I what does it mean when it's your it. day? Huh? Do you get anything special? No. You already had the Hooters. Uh, no, that's not true. I got the flag that was flying over the Capitol that day, and the gavel that they used to proclaim it Ron White Day, and uh, uh, me and a bunch of my friends and my mother were there, and I had to wear a coat and tie. I actually met. Uh, Billy Bob Thornton the night before and we stayed up drinking on his bus. He was in town shooting a Willie Nelson documentary and uh, we met down at Saxon Pub and uh, we were just instant friends and uh, we just got trashed. And he doesn't even really drink that much, but I did. And uh, we stayed up and then uh, my woman at the time was supposed to set her alarm and uh, to, to get us there and, and, and they and said, why does the alarm say 745? I'm like, let me take a stab at that. <laughs> it's 745. We got to be there in 15 minutes. So I had to wear a tie, which I did to buy, but I already had it. But So, you know, it was cool. But what happened was they didn't check my arrest record before they gave me Ron White Day. They didn't just pull it up and say, let's take a look at this. But a bunch of people did. And they're like, why does this thug get a day? And a Texas Supreme Court judge you have good hair. pulled it up. And he goes, oh, <laughs> delete, 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 oh, delete, he delete. He got rid of all of them. And so now I look like Mother Teresa up there. And, and uh, my arrest record is so clean. But when I go to Canada, they couldn't erase it there, even though it, none of it happened there. And uh, in, in Canada, which used to be a cakewalk to get into, uh, and now they get all crappy about it. And uh, Well, and they're worse about drinking and driving than they are the drugs. Because Lou had an opening act. Lewis's guy that he traveled with for a while got a DUI here. John? Not in Canada. Yeah, John. Oh, and yeah. Uh, he couldn't get in because of the DUI here unless he got five letters of recommendation saying he was an outstanding person, right? So I said, well, I'll, I'll write one because I work up there and they, they, they could Google me and see I have a decent, clean record, right? And John goes, I'm, I'm not dealing with the man. So he turned into one of those guys. I go, there is no man. It's Canada. First of all, it's a nation. It's not a man or a woman. John, they don't give a shit that you're going to take a stance. Right. Do you understand? All and your that stance does, is, I'm not coming to Canada. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah. And your, the stance is, Lewis needs right. to go hire someone else, which ended up being right. me. Which I was like, oh, that's fine, I'll go. Um, well, that's good, you're way funnier. How did you get into Canada? They're very serious about it. Less about yeah. pot, though. Than well, you know, I landed up, yeah, I have a plane that my fans bought me, and we landed at the airport. And uh, I'm like, what are, what are hold up is? You know, because you have to give them all this information when you're coming in. And uh, then they're like, they start asking me questions. Like, do you have a tattoo? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. Well, where is it and what is it? And, like, uh, and so that's apparently on my record somewhere that I have a tattoo of a worm with the planter's peanut hat on it. <laughs> and, um, it's true, uh, too. It's I true. won't make a take off his shirt. <laughs> right. It's kind of no. faded. I and thought it was a tequila worm at first. It, 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 well, that would be a mezcal worm, but you can't put worms in tequila. It's mezcal. Um, what? Close though. All right. I thought sure. mezcal was some form of tequila. No, it's it's a, a product that's like tequila, made out of the tequila region, like champagne made out of champagne. Well, you're getting picky. Just saying. Well, yeah, I just know a little bit about tequila. And. Um, well, what's the story of the tattoo? Mm -hmm. What's the story of the tattoo? What's the story? Of, Paddles wants to know why yeah. you got that tattoo. Um. Well, <laughs> we'll go back to Hawaii when I was in the Navy at 18 years old. Really, really drunk, and me and a guy named Spiker, um, <laughs> uh, who was this also young, dumb, big kid, uh, we were going to go get tattoos, and I was going to get a big old death before dishonor knife on my arm. Oh, my God. And uh, That'd be, so, well, That'd look really weird after 
being a hole in the national defense. Yeah, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have synced up. But they, they did the one line on, on it, and I was like, wow, wow. I didn't know it hurt. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to get this one. So we we found this this worm one, and uh, and so his his cane is crooked because it's not really a cane. It was the first line of that other tattoo <laughs> that they used as his cat. So he's got a monocle like uh, Bud Friedman or whatever, and uh, and a top hat and regular peanut stuff. But the cane's crooked because that was a blade of the knife uh, on the original tattoo. Spiker, on the other hand, big ass dragon that wrapped around his oh, arm all the way up, and stared at him, flicking his tongue and his head. He got the whole thing and didn't bother him. But I don't remember why I was telling the story about the tattoo. But I don't either. So they, they, you know, eventually, I mean, they can see I have a sold out show in whatever city we were in. I don't even remember. And uh, I'm like, listen, if you don't want me here. I'll just get back on my plane and leave. Uh, but uh, they, well, but did this happen? I'm like, they, 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 what did you do in 1974? I'm like, the 1974 that happened 48 years ago? Are you talking about that 1974? I don't remember. I, I, I don't remember. And then they, but they just had a way to look at all of that stuff. And, and it was all a long time ago, but there was a bunch of it. I mean, I seemed to go to jail all the time back, back then. then. Back then. And uh, I haven't actually been in jail for three months. No, I had a lot of that. But um, we're on a biscuit. Uh, but anyway, they eventually they let me in to do the show. And then one time we did it, they had us out on the tarmac going into Canada again. It was cold out. We're standing out there. And they got our luggage out, and they go by Robert Hawkins, my opening act. The dog goes and sits by his luggage, and I'm like, you didn't. Did you? And he, and he did. did. And uh, he had they found a half a joint in, uh, in his bag. And I'm like, oh, you sorry. Mark. And uh, so they, and we're out there, they're treating us like criminals, you know. They, we can't even put our hands in their pockets. We're on the tarmac, stand there now, because now the dog's got to search everything, because he found that half a joint in robbery. And I told everybody, do not bring pot. There's plenty of pot. In fact, I told the lady that processed us through, she said, is there any more marijuana on the plane? I'm like, yeah, I don't bring marijuana to Canada and I don't take hookers to Vegas because there's going to be hookers when I get there and there's going to be pot in Canada that's better than our pot, always has been. I'm just, that's not what this operation is about. We're not trying to bring a half a joint to your country. This is a comedy show and you've got people in your city that paid money to see it and I'd be glad to go do it. But they wouldn't let Robert go. So, so and actually, as soon as they, they arrested him, they put him in a nice warm van while we're still out there fucking freezing all our asses off on the tarmac. And uh, quit acting like a grown-up. <laughs> you know, they stopped me. I was going, when John decided that he wasn't going to fight the man, um, Lewis said, will you go? He had some shows. I said, I, I don't even know why I was off. I said, yeah, I'll go. Well, one the first one was in Victoria, so you flew into Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And they pulled me out of line. To this day, I don't know why. They pulled me out of line and they put me in a bunch of, in a room with a bunch of Chinese nationals that I know had chicken pox. Okay? They yep. have dots, all spots. This doesn't look healthy. Right. And they, you can't use your phone. I mean, it got militant. They were like, you do no phones. And, but yet, and I had all these papers that say I could work there. Like, it's, it's never easy. To work yeah. in Canada. I'd rather, honestly, like I said for the Montreal Comedy Festival, I w I'll do the gala thing that's on TV. I, could you not pay me? Just don't. Just act like I didn't do it. I, I don't even care if I don't get paid. Because even the tax thing, like my brother was helping me with all that for a while. He's right. like, fucking hey, dude. Canada's still left there that $8 from 1994. And I'm like, just give them the $8. I've given it to them 18 times. And they're not counting it. But anyway, the guy. Hard to make money over there. Finally, yeah, it, yeah. But the, the crowds are so appreciative, and I like all the Canadian fans, and I like going somewhere different, and I like seeing all their stuff. And uh, the guy starts questioning me, and he has zero sense of humor, and he's not particularly nice. And it, he came up with like question number nine: Will there be alcohol? Now I've been held for about four hours. I've already missed the plane to Victoria. I lose just lose just on his own. Fuck it, I. 
I ain't gonna make it. There's no way I'm gonna make it. And I told him all that. You know, the show is this thing, and they don't care. And he said, will there be alcohol at the venues you are performing at? And I said, I fucking hope so. Because if there's not, me and Canada are over. And he, I got put in the penalty box for cussing. He goes, we don't allow, we don't allow cursing here, ma'am. I said, well, I'm a little too fucking late on that one, aren't I? And he didn't think, find that was funny either. And I got put in the penalty box and I didn't make the show. You missed the show? Yeah. It's the only show I've ever missed in my life. Because the flights, they don't care. Immigration doesn't care that I have a connecting flight yeah, to the island to, of Victoria. Right. No, and I couldn't even tell Lewis. I mean, I think he, for the most part, thinks I'm a responsible human. So it's weird to not hear from me. Either the plane went down or I've been arrested. And I wasn't technically arrested. but And I still, to this day, don't know why. I had, you, you know, lawyers have to put out all those pay, work papers saying that you've done the thing to get the... You, you're allowed to work in Canada. It's like that many papers. Right. I had it from the people. And I presented it. I, I don't, to this day, I don't know why. And I've never had any problem anywhere else. Never in Montreal. Because they think oh, the comedy festival's there. They know we're coming. Right. They're just used to a, a hundred of us showing up one day. And they don't care. But any other place I've flown into Canada, I never had a problem. Just Vancouver. Yeah, I've had problems a couple places, but 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 it's also because of they used to just be easier on that kind of stuff than they are now, and we're such pricks about them coming to the U.S. They decided to be pricks about us coming to Canada, and it happened to affect me and you when it didn't bother most people because they don't really go to Canada that much. Well, they should though. I love Canada. I you don't know? think I've Americans loved... think of it. Especially Midwestern people like my sister said one time, oh, so-and-so wants to have a bachelorette party. I said, you should go to Montreal. It only takes from the Midwest. It's nothing. I've always promoted and, that as the one, be one of the most beautiful, fun cities in uh, North America, yeah. along with um, uh, a couple cities in Mexico and uh, and, and uh, Santa Barbara well, in the U.S. That's it. Santa, but, Santa Barbara? Yeah, I love Santa Barbara. I, right. You think it's, I don't know, you think it's a city? I don't know. I, it says city limits on the sign. So. When you go in, I guess I'm thinking like Montreal is a city city. Oh, no. Yeah. Santa Barbara seems like a giant suburb to me. I can't really find the core. I did find the Mexican core, which was great. Oh, the of Santa Barbara. Are fantastic. Yeah, that's, you don't need And to you go. know why they're fantastic? Because you can't make any money selling shitty food to rich people. They just won't buy it. So, so all the restaurants are great. There was a little tent Mexican food place that cooked off a burner. And it was, uh, what's the famous uh, uh, American chef uh, that wrote the... Boyardee. No. <laughs> he Come wasn't on. really a chef. Yes, he was. Now the lady that wrote the uh, All You Need to Know About French Cooking. and Julia Child. Child. Julia Child. Child. Yeah, she lived in uh, Montecito in her favorite restaurant were these Mexican guys that had a tent and a burner and they cooked for 350 people a day off of like two burners and uh, and cooked roasted peppers in the fire. Well, but that was her favorite restaurant. She said it every time somebody asked her. I don't remember the name of it. But it was on um, Lamar. No. Lamb. Milpas. South Milpas. Or, or West Milpas. I'm putting put it in the podcast notes. Paddles will put it in the notes. All right. All right. Um, Verifiable. I'm not going to go. Um, do you know anything about Bitcoin? No. Okay. I mean, I know what it is. But... What do you think it is? I think it's an alternative currency. That's correct. Good job. You're surprised, aren't you? <laughs> I am surprised on that one. I didn't think you. It's it, Well, I find it to be very hard reading, and I've talked about it in here, but I don't feel like I explained it right. So I found a better explanation. Yeah. And I have, here, I'll show you right now. I bought Ethereum. That's of one of the coins. <laughs> but right now, it's worth $1,004.73. Now, this had sunk all the way down to like $202. And originally, this amount was $2,500. And I thought I lost it all. And then somebody on the YouTube comments or Twitter told me to go back and check. Because Ethereum had gone. Because now it's catching on and it's kind of valid. Semi, semi. Valid. So is that an alternative to Bitcoin, or is that a Bitcoin? That's one of the coins. Do you know what Bitcoin is? <laughs> Not a hundred percent. Okay. 
<laughs> but see, no, right. no, there's like a lot of Bitcoins. There's Ethereum, there's XRP. Yeah, there's but they're not all Bitcoins. Bitcoins. That's like saying everything's a Coca-Cola. Uh, Pepsi Cola no, is not Bit Coca-Cola. No, it's the same kind of thing. No, because within Bitcoin, you can buy Ethereum. It's cryptocurrency. It's crypto. Cryptocurrency. See how I threw that out to confuse you because I didn't know what I meant, so I said it to you, and then your brain stopped. No, cryptocurrency is exactly right, but there are more than one. Well, but right. Bitcoin, Ethereum is housed within Bitcoin. Oh, okay. It's not its own. Well, at least that's the way it's been explained me to me. Excuse me for acting like it's I knew what I was talking about when I didn't. It's its own. Cryptocurrency. It happens all the time. Well, I'll explain it more when you're not here. <laughs> okay, I like to tell people what I'm watching. Um, I told everybody to watch Queen's Gambit. You mm -hmm. like that, right? And, I absolutely loved it. And now we're into... The Crown. The Crown. Season four. I think it's... Um, and Gillian Anderson plays Margaret Thatcher. Amazing. Dynamite. The cast, the entire cast from top to bottom. I, I, I buy every single syllable that they're selling. You know, I do too. And um, so I, I think it's great. And you know who should else get a shout out? Hair and makeup. Because she looks exactly like Margaret Thatcher and the clothes and the queen shit. That's got to be a giant pain in the ass to do all. I mean, I don't like doing that stuff. So for me, it would be uh, brutal. Yeah. But for hair and makeup people, maybe they enjoy the challenge. <laughs> well, I, I played a guy. My character, Phil, in uh, Roadies, uh, which was on for one season in, uh, on Showtime. The character was bald. And uh, it took three hours. Okay. See, I couldn't. To make me bald. So what they would do, and I haven't had a haircut or shaved since I quit doing stand-up uh, eight months ago, and I refused to as some kind of a protest. Um, but they would have to take this part of my hair, and they would glue it to my head, and then put a bald cap on top of it, and then take this hair and comb it over the bald spot so it looked pretty real. How do you get that glue out? Uh, you wash your hair about 30 times. Oh, and God. Just trying to, yeah, it was... I, at first I was like, Cameron Crowe directed it, and he's like, yeah, the character is bald. I'm like, why don't you just get a bald guy and save all that time and money? And he goes, well, oh, that'll be fun. That's and not fun like, to sit there. No, but I liked being bald because nobody expected it. And so some nights, I mean, if I had done a, the character, and he, he wore a hat, so I didn't have to do it every day because he wore a hat, but when he took the hat off, he was bald. And uh, so if I had a set... Uh, scene the next day with that same thing. I would just stay bald and uh, and go around and be bald. And people, people had no idea. You're bald? Overnight? I know. Overnight. Uh, yeah. Um, I also would like to understand why you found Graceland disappointing. Uh, well, I just, I mean, I saw it kind of later in life, you know, in my 30s or whatever I just expected it to be really really grand and it just wasn't very grand it's you know, not it, it, it's uh I liked the uh eternal flame in the graves and I lit a cigarette off the eternal flame nice. Elvis's eternal flame. Was... did you like the racquetball court yeah yeah in your 70s yeah All right. I thought it was you know if I'd have seen it younger, before I'd seen a lot of stuff, you know, I'd have probably gone, wow, look at this, oh, this is great, all this furniture, and she had carpet on the walls and things. But I just thought it would be grander, you know. He only paid kind of grand for it. Well, you know? you know, when I saw it, I thought it, this could be, like, growing up in St. Louis, you go, go, oh, well, that house is probably a doctor lives there. Right. That's what it looked like. It didn't, and it really was a doctor. That it, it was a doctor's house. It just, bottom. I yeah. agree, but I did think the experience of Graceland was well worth the trip. And then, I don't know if you went across the street. And look went, at the plane. Did you go in the plane, yeah. Lisa Marie? With a big ass uh, seat belt across the bed. And yeah, it's like a time capsule. More yeah, really, than a... That, that, it's all fun. I mean, everybody should go to Graceland and, uh, and check it out. But that's where the that's where the king of rock and roll. Uh, that's well, that's he, because the man was keeping him down. The man was keeping him down. Um, so here's my last little story. Sometimes uh, my state seems to um, end up in the news for the wrong reasons. Missouri, in mm -hmm. case you don't know mm -hmm. what her state is, mm -hmm. Missouri. Parents tried to cover up a super spreader dance. Disaster ensued. 
Didn't take long. Didn't take a detective long to realize someone in Rolla, Missouri was throwing a massive party even before it was deemed a potential super spreader event. Sailing themed invitations were screenshotted on Snapchat. Uh, parents w wrote cryptic Facebook posts. Pink formal dresses popped up on Instagram, but the Rolla residents who saw those posts didn't likely put together the full picture. Nor could have they predicted to the extent to which the event and unsanctioned homecoming dance at a local sea house, steakhouse would affect the community, forcing the health department to devote all of its resources to one fiasco and nudging the high school back to full-on virtual learning. So everybody was in on it. The, the principal? The parents. The parents. No, not the high oh. school per se, but the parents. Um, signed off. Signed up. Up and off, yes. Um, uh, numerous, 200 of them. There were 200 high school students at the steakhouse. And <laughs> it was called a parent-organized event, and the department said the students were, from the freshman through senior classes were present. President, the individuals we have been in contact all, all report no masks were worn, and that the masks were made optional by event organizers. And then all these, they're going to get quotes from people and because they can track the Facebook post and shit. Absolutely. And the answers, fuck you, we ain't talking. <laughs> okay? That's, that's your, that's your, that's your mid-Missouri coming you, at you. We ain't talking. Fuck you. Uh, no comment. They, somebody, right. Somebody that's the same that thing. Out. Um, uh, they have skepticism. It's about an hour 40. You've probably done shows. It's in Rolla, Missouri. You've probably done. There's a university there. It's the smart kids, the engineering students. I don't really think I have. Okay. Well, yeah, I think you have. Okay. I'm gonna say you did. <laughs> well, you <laughs> told me we, earlier. Why don't we fight about something else? All right. Um, they, so I'm going to get to how many people this spread to. Um. So my friend did a th and I did a thing yesterday. Local parent so and so posted on Facebook after the dance. We did a really big thing and we had a lot of support and a lot of help and a lot of happy kids and it was kind of amazing and I really want to recognize and thank these people, but I can't. My heart is full and I think the kids are happy and it was worth it. I would do it again. I'm happy and sad at the same time. I want to be normal. We think, I think we delivered this for one night. The hashtag appeared uh, to mirror the slogan H O C O, sailing out of 220. That's what the dance was, sailing out of 220. Oh, I Which, thought you said saline. I did too. I was like, what does it got to do with salt? <laughs> <laughs> but it was sailing. It was an extra salty steak. <laughs> <laughs> like, what kind of steakhouse is this? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, shh. <laughs> if you're going to do an article, one lady said to somebody who asked, I suggest you look into the high school activities this week leading to the dance and the community events. They noted that several several events, including boys and girls basketball and wrestling tryouts, powder puff, powder puff practice. I did not know we still had powder puff. I thought that was like from the 50s. That's, well, I don't know what it is. Powder what is, puff? What is I think they're like cheerleaders, right? Ah. Paddles, look it up. Yeah, with pom pom, the pom pom squad, pom powder, pom called powder, 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 powder puffs. puffs. Yes, oh. it was like a thing in the fifties, I think. No, and, no, and no, no. What is it? It's flag football or touch football or women's football. Ooh. Flag football, touch football. No. Well, this is what Wikipedia says. All right, the paddles. Says <laughs> right, yours was a guess. <laughs> paddles is looking this up. Thank you. You're winging it. Uh, I'm going with the paddles. <laughs> As of Friday, Rollups, Rollups County had population is 44,000. They had a cumulative total of 1,200 cases and 34 deaths from COVID. County had an average of 28 daily new cases over the figure that's been incre increasing. Uh, and they've traced it. To, there was another good quote. Oh, I wanted to see one of the other parents. I had a good one. Um, and then they just go into teams. I'm sorry. And this is a good, here's a quote for you. This is something you, and 90% of this is on Facebook. You don't find this on Instagram. Right. You find pictures of beagle puppies. Right. Instagram doesn't get political. Right. Twitter, a lot of fighting. But not that political. It, yeah. It can be, but only if that's what you choose to follow. Like, you know, if you choose ESPN, yeah. and you make your own news feed, right? Here's one. This was on Facebook. I'm sorry. 
But if you're okay with your kid ratting out other kids to the health department for attending a private event, you are the bigger problem. Shaking my damn head. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag shaking my damn head. Socialism! <laughs> Socialism, she wrote. I don't have to answer any of their questions. Fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck them, except she used a hashtag and a percentage sign. She didn't write the whole word fuck. She put in bleeps. Yeah, but you know. We know, yeah, we know. This is how it all starts, she continued. Dividing, labeling, your home raided in the middle of the night. Don't think it could happen here. Think again. The difference is our citizens are armed, according <laughs> And white people can kill you from further away because of their deer hunting skills. <laughs> when pressed on whether she or the other parents engaged in an effort to mislead or evade the health department, she replied, I'm not going to respond to these accusations. And that means you did it. Yeah, it means you don't have to respond. <laughs> you just responded. But, you know, they did have a whole season of football, and the kids were practicing, and they were, you know, so then they're saying, well... If you did all that, why can't we have a homecoming? All right. All right. Well, that woman, if it was a woman, was it a woman? That woman that I was reading the quotes from, yeah. 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 Well, number one, if there was a, a significant uh, article in the Wall Street Journal that gave a different opinion, that woman cannot read the Wall Street Journal because the words are big and they'll just move right on to something that has smaller words in it. <laughs> and uh, those That's dumber true. publications are spouting what she wants to hear and that makes her a fucking fool. Uh, but, you know what, a lot of people can't read uh, even the Washington Post, you know, because they're big words. Uh, they're smart people writing these things. And it's hard to follow sometimes if you have a 10th grade high school education. I struggle with it and I'm a reader. Uh, but, uh, but I think that's part of it is that just, it's hard to read the truth because it's written in a complicated way sometimes and then they don't want to hear it anyway. So it's easier to find like, you know, like, a, you know, somebody that uses a 200 word vocabulary, those people are gravitated towards them, uh, because they're idiots and they've got a 200 word vocabulary and they kind of make a connection with it. So. Fuck it. Right, fuck it, fuck them, fuck them, fuck, fuck them, fuck them, um, 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 fuck them. She didn't write out them. Um, fuck them, <laughs> fuck them, um. fuck them. Um. But she spelled out um, um, fuck them, but not fuck. U M or E M? E M. Okay. U <laughs> M would be better. <laughs> um. uh, so anyway, a bunch of people ended up sick from it, and. Uh, there's no and, and deaths, right? Did yeah. you say 30? Yeah. There were like four people that are tied. It's like the main wedding. Seven people died from that main wedding, and but they didn't even didn't attend. go. They were just, they just right. harvested it back. Yeah. Um, what do we know? You can't fix, fix stupid. stupid. Yeah. And you know what? I think that's a good chance to wrap this up and plug that you actually have face masks that say you, you can't fix stupid. I do. And, uh, and you know what, though? Uh, I like... I like wearing them. I wouldn't wear one, and I tell you why. It's gonna start <laughs> because people start trying to read your face, right? They're like, because you can't exactly read it because your face is curved, and it says you can't fix stupid, and people are like going, "What does it say on your face?" <clears throat> and if you don't want people doing that, just wear a regular mask. Don't wear mine, you know, because people are gonna try to read your face. But you know, you don't know who stupid is. You don't know if it's an accusation. Well, you know. it could be a fight starter. And, you know, you don't want to be, like, in a Staples and have a fight break out because there's no security. And I have number one tequila masks, and, but and, and but you can't fix stupid. There's an autograph of my autograph right there, a copy of my autograph on the bottom of it. So it says Ron White on it. And I, I was voting the other day, and uh, I, I went to the Mexican Cultural Center to vote. So I got a sticker that says, Yo Vote. <laughs> 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 I could have picked the English one, but I picked the Spanish one. But somebody said, is that a Ron White quote on your face? And I pulled my mask down, and they're like, you're Ron White! And I'm like, I know, now I feel stupid because I'm wearing my own quote on my head. And, um, and I just pulled off my mask in public. Right, and super spread it. Um, I don't have any but, it, but you went to the Mexican Cultural Center to be a super spreader. <laughs> <laughs>
I went because anyway. it was literally 400 steps from my condo in August. <laughs> so it, it was easy. And I thought there would be lines out of the Yang. There was nobody there. I mean, not a person there. I think a lot of people voted early uh, and yeah. mailed stuff in yeah, because of the did. COVID. And, yeah. and I, here's the great, and I'll we'll wrap it up. Every time my brother goes to vote, so my dad's name is John Patrick Madigan, Jr., he never wasn't named Junior, but because his father had the exact same name and so did his father, things were getting confusing on mail and taxes. You know, it's just too many people with the same right. name. So he became Junior, and my brother is John Patrick Madigan, but he's not a Junior, but my dad's older. So the old ladies that run the voting deal, my parents are like the first ones there. At whatever time it opens. Whatever time it opens, they've already been in the parking lot for six, for at least a half hour. Right. And uh, he went in and voted. And this has happened to Patrick probably five times now. He shows up and they're like, no, no, no. You you've already, already voted. You've already voted. Yeah. And he's like, ma'am, I haven't been here. I swear to you. Well, there's just no way that a young man could be. He, we already met Junior. <laughs> and he was older. Junior was older. Junior seventy nine. So what the fuck are you trying to pull? Twice he didn't vote. <laughs> he just what left. Did, he just left. What about the third? Is it too late to add that to his name? Well, we're not blue bloods. <laughs> we're not Protestants. <laughs> oh, I thought you were. Oh. Well, well, I don't really know that well, many Catholics, the Irish Catholics. They were, it. No, the third. I don't... That's sort of a British... Thurston Howell. He was British. I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> the only one. It, that's like a blue blood thing. Not even just British, but like a George Bushy like type. Blue blood, New England money that does the third and the fourth and the... Charles Howell, the golfer, the third from Augusta, Georgia. You think he's blue blood? It might have been. Could have been one of the original settlers in, settlers in Virginia that oh. moved down to Georgia. Can we move back to the Bitcoin thing? What'd you pay for that thing? That was worth a thousand dollars. I just said twenty five hundred. You paid twenty five hundred. But it got down to two hundred. I just well, I wrote it off. I don't it didn't even you have. You thought it. it was just tanking. There's it. an app called Coinbase, and that tells you about your coins, your magic coins, right? right? Your magic chocolate coins. And I switched. I updated my phone. I didn't even do the app again because I figured. I just lost all that. So you're up a, up a grand then? No, I'm not. Well, you're I'm down, down 1500 1, but you thought you were down twenty five. <laughs> yes. But you're up um, a, so once that's gone, now you've climbed back up a grand. Right. Okay. I've still lost $1,500. Yeah. Chocolate coins. I've lost well, chocolate yeah, coins, I, magic I know, coins. Right. I'm just saying you're up a grand from where you thought you were. Yes. I thought it was done. Yeah. But so. it's making a comeback. And, you know, Facebook's going to try to do their own version of Bitcoin called Libra. And there's going to be cash like that. And that keeps getting pushed forward. So if that becomes valid, then I really think my Bitcoin can, if we're going to start accepting it, and I've seen it in a few gas stations, we accept Bitcoin. Yeah. In Kentucky. If you need to get a breakfast taco from Love's. No, Love's doesn't have any. I think hookers take them. <laughs> <laughs> the hookers do with the Bitcoin? I think so. Maybe. In a tip jar. Still better than your football. Bag. I have no reason to know this, other than I read something about it. That they're now taking Bitcoin. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, if you need to borrow something, I got a thousand of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good to know. All right. Good to know. Well, that's it, termites. You know, that's um, it's been a long time. We have to go golf now, so we're gonna sign off. You can say night night termites since you're the grand termite. I'd like to say this to all of you out there listening. Night night termite. <laughs> <laughs>